Hello everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, we are going to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Today, our topic for discussion is how effective is your shielding against electric fuel or capacitive coupling. Okay, I'm also going to share with you the rules and regulation. For example, if you disregard the rules and regulation, even with shielding, okay, there is very minimum effect against electric fuel coupling. If not, why bother to have the cost on the shielding? But your overall effect of shielding is very negligible. Hence, this is a very important concept. This will be the part 12 series discussion. The earlier on discussion on EMC, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like and subscribe. So guys, please don't hesitate to press the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate your effort. Okay, so today we are going to discuss how the shielding can act upon when you actually encounter electric fuel coupling. Okay, a cable shield used to suppress electric fuel should be grounded at both ends. Okay, so later on, I'm going to explain to you why it's needed to ground at both ends. Okay, cable can act as an effective antenna either to pick up or to radiate noise. Okay, to analyze the effect of shielding on capacitive coupling, okay, we need to consider three cases of shielding of the cable. So these are the three cases. First case is the victim conductor okay, is completely shielded, okay, which means that 100% you shield your conductor, okay, which is the victim, against any interference. Okay, so with this, you more or less can anticipate there won't be any EMC consideration at all because you 100% shield your victim. Next, okay, so the conductor actually extend beyond the shield. Okay, so this case is much more practical. Okay, for example, okay, we have a wire. We also strip off the, the shield in order to connect the conductive part to another component. Okay, we're going to see how this will affect the shielding effect. Okay, if there is just a little extend out from the shield. Next, conductor extend beyond the shield, okay, which means that they actually have a long piece of exposed conductor, okay, and the conductor has finite resistance to ground. Okay, so these are the three cases that we are going to take a close look. So case number one, okay, like what I told you, okay, the victim is completely shielded. So for example, this is a conductor one, where is the noise source? This is conductor two. Here, which is the victim. So you 100% shield your conductor too, then I don't think we need to further discuss on this. As long as you ground on both sides, okay, we don't need to do any discussion because there won't be any EMC consideration at all. In conclusion here, okay, if the shield is ground on both sides, okay, there is no voltage pick up by conductor two. Okay, shielding perfectly intimate capacity coupling. Okay, so like what I mentioned, okay, okay, we know that this is not practical at all. It's almost impossible to 100% shield a wire okay, because the wire is actually expect to join to another component, for example. So now I'm going to explain to you why you need to shield on both sides. This is the diagram on the previous page. This is your noise source. This is your victim. As I told you that if we do a 100% shield, so we're going to Look at this part here. So this C1S and this conductor two. So I replicate it over here. Okay, so this is C1S and this is conductor two. So let's say if you do a grounding on one side. Okay, so what happened here is basically on the other side, okay, they can become effective antenna. Okay, with the conductor shield, they become a antenna. Okay, so you know that capacitor is actually can mimic as a voltage source. They can either radiate out or they can actually pick up the noise. So therefore, it's very crucial that you ground on both sides. So once you ground on both sides, okay, there is no way that 
this card will become an antenna. Case number two, extend beyond the shield. This conductor actually exposed out. Again, this is what we have illustrated during the electric field coupling. Okay, if there is a higher potential, for example, conductor one has a higher potential as compared to the ground, there will be a coupling coefficient onto the ground. So this is what we call C1G. The shield is also grounded. Okay, so therefore there will be a coupling coefficient which is C1S. Okay, so since there is some explosion on conductor two, there will be some coupling coefficient from conductor one to conductor two. Okay, next on conductor two. Again, conductor two has a higher potential as compared to the ground. So therefore, there will be a capacitive effect from conductor two to the ground. Okay, remember we ground the shield. So there will be a small coupling coefficient from conductor two to the shield. Last but not least, the shield has minimum coupling coefficient to the ground since four point grounded. Okay, however, you know that there is no perfect ground. So there will be some stark potential difference between the shield versus the actual ground. So in general, okay, we can actually arrive at this equivalent circuit. So this is the source, okay, the source here. Okay, next, this part will be grounded, C1G. So C1G is here. Okay, remember I told you that the shield is actually grounded. So this conductor one to C1S to the ground, which is represent here. Next, we have this C12, coupling from conductor one to conductor two, which is represent here. After this, we have C2G, conductor two to the ground, okay, which is represent here. And last but not least, this portion here, which is the conduction between C2S, which is represent here. Okay, so now you have a better idea how I actually arrive at the equivalent circuit. Next, okay, I can actually simplify the circuit. So you can see that these two capacitors, they are in series with the source. So I can animate away these two capacitors and present this equivalent circuit. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please follow my next video in order to fully understand the shielding effectiveness against electric field coupling. Thank you so much, guys. Please also help the channel by like and subscribe. Thank you.